Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone. So this week I have a very interesting book yet again for you. A Chimpanzee Politics by Franz Duol. It's a classic book on not necessarily just psychology, but uh, culture and power and sex and politics among chimpanzees. Why am I reading this? Well, Newt Gingrich, who was the um, uh, who led the House or won the House for the Republicans back in the nineties. Um, whether you like it or not, had a very impressive political career. And this is one of the books that he actually swears by. So I bought this book to really understand, like, why would this politician be reading a book about chimpanzees? And the reason why is that we're actually quite similar, and by quite I mean a lot, we're, we're very similar to, to chimpanzees. Now, uh, the book uh, follows, or at least studies, a group of chimpanzees in a Dutch zoo and studies the hierarchies uh, and, and power struggles between the males and females and the different subgroups. Now, uh, in chimpanzee tribes, uh, there can be alpha males and alpha females. And one thing that I got out of this that was very interesting that's applicable to the professional world is this list of what does it take to be an alpha, uh, whether it's alpha male or, or female, and be the leader of a group. And so it can be really boiled down into three things, really. Number one, be a very good fighter. So as a chimpanzee, you know, to be a good fighter, that means you, you're not only very strong and fast, but you're also very smart and strategic in, in how you fight somebody, right? Now, in the professional world, fortunately, unless you're a UFC fighter, um, we're not getting in physical altercations with each other. But definitely there are some battles to be won in meetings, right? And so maybe being a good fighter in the corporate world means uh, being able to exert your dominance and your authority, you know, when it comes to certain topics, um, it's been shown that the uh, you know the trait of agreeableness, meaning your ability to be, I guess, compassionate and kind to others, um, the higher agreeableness you have, the less likely you're going to make more money and uh, you know climb the dominance hierarchy in in corporations. So being uh, less agreeable in certain moments and maybe being very strategic and skilled when it comes to debate um, when needed will be something that can help you quite a lot. Second thing is having a unique and creative expertise. So with chimpanzees and tribes, if you're a chimp and let's say there's a fruit high up on a tree and other chimps just don't know how to get up there, but you're able to devise a very creative way to get the fruit down, maybe by shaking the tree or throwing things at it. But you think of something that sets you apart from the other chimps that they immediately recognize that you're very different and you're intelligent. So it's it's to their benefit to uh, form an alliance with you and get close to you because you can get food, you you can figure figure out certain problems. In the professional world, you know this could be uh, not only a skill set but being very strategic. You know it's easy to find people who know how to put out fires, but what if you're the type of person who can see fires before they even start. That by itself will put you in a much higher position. And I think some of the best uh, VPs and executives I ever met were these type of people where they had a very unique expertise that was one, you know, one in a million. Um, and I think you know, one way to develop this as a young professional is to think, what can I do that can't be written down on paper? Because if you can write down what you can do, very specifically and in details, then you can be easily replaced by somebody who is cheaper, faster, and better than you at that skill. But if it's a unique skill such as uh, the ability to be very good at marketing or an incredibly talented saleswoman or salesman, those kind of things are hard to quantify and essentially replicate. So those are the kind of things that give you these, this very unique and creative expertise for solving a problem. And the last thing is forming social bonds. Now, not everybody is going to be like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was definitely brilliant, but he was definitely not the kind of guy who was going around trying to be friendly and form social bonds with people. Um, to your advantage, it's best to go out of your way and so form social bonds with people. So in chimpanzee tribes, the most dominant males or dominant females also spend a lot of time, you know, grooming other chimps, taking care of them, forming social bonds because, you know, the uh, collective power 
of being, let's say, an alpha female or alpha male with the support of the group will make you much more powerful than being a, an alpha male or female all by yourself. It's been seen that, you know, say you have a very dominant, strong, and aggressive alpha male who doesn't uh, do very good in social bonds, very easily two uh, less uh, skilled and less powerful males will dethrone that male because of the fact that social bonds have been formed. They found this also in chimpanzee tribes where, you know, uh, certain males, you know, who they thought might be the dominant male in the group or dominant female in the group actually did not end up becoming that because they didn't have strong social bonds. In your professional life, uh, especially in the workplace, it doesn't do you justice to look at it as a uh, survival of the fittest because nobody's going to end up liking you. So going out of your way to not only be a team player, but definitely spend time, you know, developing social bonds. And of course, do this with, gen you know, be genuine and authentic about it. Um, it it'll, do you, it'll do you a lot of justice because at the end of the day, not only do you have other people looking out for you and your interests, but also people who will be supportive of you. And as a result, because of your ability to create these social bonds, you do the same for them. You look out for them, you, you help them, you make them feel better. And so really, I think the uh, the goal for any professional is to, to to attain all three of these things. Now, one thing I want to kind of mind loom into this is this last piece is forming social bonds. So, why is it that we are forming social bonds as human beings, as mammals, as animals? You know, w is it really that we're altruistic? And this is where I want to just make one quick reference to the Moral Animal by Robert Wright, where altruism, meaning you know, I'm going to be very nice to my brother or sister because I care about them. You know, it's the right thing to do. Altruism is actually a very selfishly driven um, trait because altruism, at the very crux of it, really means that I need to be nice to others to ensure the survival of my genes. And that's really what's been built into our subconscious. And that's why, not always, but for example, you'll feel very badly if you hurt or betray a brother or sister, um, you'll feel more hurt being uh, doing that to a, to a sibling as opposed to a close friend and you'll feel even less uh, badly about it if it was just let's say an acquaintance and then a stranger. So those are, well, that's the book of the week, we can call it books of the week. Um, leave a comment below, what do you think about this list and do you feel like it's helped you in your career and perhaps which one of these do you feel that you need to be a little bit more focused on? For me, um, I'll be very vulnerable in saying this, I think I need to be better about being a better fighter. I think that in general, I, I tend to shy away from conflict. I, I, I really pref prefer forming social bonds. But there are times where, as a young professional, I had to learn to sort of stand up for myself, put my foot down in terms of what I believe in, and, and fight for a, better, for a better thing. And fortunately, I've, I've had the right mentors who maybe at the time when I, let's say, proposed a strategy could debate me out of it or beat me out in a discussion, but knew that I needed a little bit of help articulating what that strategy was, even though that meant they were going to lose that argument. So as a leader, I think that's something that you can really um, uh, uh, bestow a great, you know, a great thing onto your team by doing that, is that maybe they're not very good at debating or arguing, so you have to help them articulate their thoughts a little bit better and essentially help them get better confidence to do that. I know that I've had mentors who helped me with this and I'm still still working on this, but fortunately I'm in a great place where I don't really have to worry too much about this. So anyways, happy Wisdom Wednesday. Leave a comment below and as always, I'll see you next week.